Hello. My name is Dr. William Benzing, and I'm a freelance geoscientist working out of my home and doing business at RevTech Research and Consulting. <clears throat> I would like to present to you a presentation of a structural geology project for which I am currently seeking 1999 financial support. Your company's support will provide me with an opportunity to continue this applied research, and in return, expose your company to a new exploration concept, which has the potential for unlocking new fields or pay zones in structurally complex areas. The project has been entitled the Job 28-9 concept, for reasons which will be explained shortly. Please remember that research dollars are considered tax-deductible dollars by the IRS. Understanding tectonic deformation is complicated by the fact that forces which cause the deformation are not simple shear and compressive forces. And often, there are several tectonic events separated in time. The Job 28-9 concept attempts to explain how crustal deformation results in a structurally complex basin and range province. Two distinct time-separated tectonic events are used to create a crustal deformation which exhibits key elements observed in typical basin and range provinces. These key elements are exemplified in this cross-section across the Uinta uplift which separates the Green River Basin to the north and the Peasance Basin to the south. The first key element is a deep frontal basin adjacent to a high angle structural style. Typically, the frontal high angle thrust is associated with an overturned clastic section which has been significantly thinned. The next element is an uplifted and eroded region composed primarily of basement rocks. Thirdly, an elevated and stratigraphically thinner back basin is observed. The back basin is flanked by low angle structures which project in the opposite direction from the frontal structures. Based upon the Job 28-9 concept, these key elements of a basin and range province can be created by two tectonic events, a transpressional faulting event followed by an event best described as a deep crustal uplift. The next series of diagrams illustrate the two tectonic events and associated rock deformations we begin with an undeformed crustal block. Horizontal, compressive, and shear forces create a zone of transpressional wrenching within the crustal block. Described as the mountain building phase, plunging in echelon crustal folds are developed along the wrench. The lateral crustal movement and associated shearing creates a zone of weakness beneath the folds. This is the first tectonic event. Responding to pressure from below, the weakened crust is uplifted, causing the central portion of the wrench folds to be uplifted and overturned. This is the second tectonic event. Subsequent erosion along the uplift effectively removes a clastic section, leaving an uplifted igneous core flanked 
by overturned plastic folds. The nine uplifted distal ends of the wrench folds remain in the adjacent flanking basins created by the uplift. This scenario of uplifted and overturned wrench folds is portrayed along the Wichita mega shear. This left lateral event created large wrench folds which were subsequently uplifted during early Pennsylvania time to form the Wichita Amarillo uplift. In this diagram of the uplift and associated flanking basins, the non-uplifted distal ends of the folds are seen extending away from the central uplift area in red. The Anadarko is considered the deep frontal basin while the Paladuro and Hardman basins are elevated back basins. The essence of uplifting and overturning transpressional folds from below is captured in the biblical verse from the book of Job, chapter 28, verse 9, which states, He puts his hand on the flint, he overturns the mountains at the root. As will be shown, Uplifting relatively simple folds causes fold limbs to thicken and thin and the folds themselves to be stretched and compressed. The secret of how this happens lies in understanding the process by which granular material in the crust is uplifted. My knowledge of granular uplift comes from laboratory experimentation in which balloons were inflated in sand-filled tanks like that shown here. Colored sand layers provided an easy means of mapping the granular deformation associated with the simulated uplift. This diagram displays the deformation associated with uplift. Notice how initially flat bedding is deformed into step-like flexures on the flanks of the uplift while some bed thinning occurs, bed thinning occurs over the crest of the uplift. The step flexures observed in the experiment are similar to upper Cretaceous flexures observed in the Alps. Analysis of the uplift experiment suggests that intergranular shearing is a dominant deformation mechanism. The intergranular shearing mechanism provides a mean of up means of uplifting an initially horizontal bed in such a manner as to maintain a constant sediment volume within the bed. In this figure, an asymmetrical uplift occurs, causing an initially flat horizon to be uplifted. Based upon gravity data and field observations, the asymmetry of the uplift, with one flank steeper than the other, is considered to be the most realistic shape for deep crustal uplift. This diagram shows that even though portions of the bed, bed are thickened and thinned by the shearing mechanism during uplift, bed volume remains constant. Volume pre equals volume post uplift. This is the most important physical constraint for a realistic uplift mechanism. Understanding how a flat bed is uplifted provides a key for construction of an uplift grid which can be used to determine how a dipping bed is deformed by the same uplift. 